What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how to use the volumetric fog settings in order to create visible sunlight rays going into your model. So sometimes these are called God rays, um, but these are rays that you can use to uh, light your model and make your sunlight look a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember before, what we ended up doing is we ended up creating a, a rendering of this space and uh, I will link to that video down below and basically the rendering was just uh but if you remember previously all we were doing is we just had a V-Ray rectangle light off to the side here that was lighting our scene inside of V-Ray. So you can see how that was uh, creating kind of a clean scene where we could get in here and just render out some of the details and things like that. Um, but we weren't doing a whole lot with the exterior sunlight. And uh, so I, what I want to talk about is how to use the volumetric fog settings in order to create rays coming in through the window. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to start off and we're going to turn our V-Ray rectangle light off. So I'm just going to click the off button right here and uh, you can see how when I do that, um, that light is no longer casting light into our model and now we just have the sunlight casting light through the window. And uh, one other thing to note about that, that has been turned off. Um, you could also leave that on and make it invisible so that way you could cast a little extra light in here if you wanted to. For what we're doing here, we don't necessarily need that though. So you can see how I have my interactive render going on right now and all I have at the moment is I just have the sun shining in here I'm not really using the rectangle or the sphere light anymore and then I also have my exposure value set to 11.8 so that's the value I've found that's really kind of giving me the best lighting for what's in here. You you kind of need to play around with that a little bit because you don't want to over or under expose um, your image because you don't want it to look washed out, but you also want it to render out enough that you don't have a ton of noise or anything like that. And so, um, and then the shadows have just been set up using SketchUp shadows. So you can see how you can kind of adjust those however you want. I've set those up so that the shadow is being cast kind of across this bed. So that's giving me some nice interesting shadows across this bed. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our settings and we're going to turn on the volumetric environment. So the volumetric environment is what's going to allow us to add the fog. Um, it's kind of like a fog that um, basically makes your light rays visible. You can see how as I rotate through this right now you can't really see the light rays. Like this is lighting the room, but there's no actual rays coming through here. So, and if you don't see this when you click on settings in V-Ray 3.6, just click on this little arrow right here, and you're going to look for the option that says volumetric environment. And so when you do that, you're going to click on this, and uh, that's automatically going to make your image look really weird. And part of the reason for that is because this is currently set to aerial perspective. We don't want this set to aerial perspective, we want this set to environmental fog. So just click the drop down and select the option for environmental fog. And you can see how I've actually already adjusted some of these settings, but we're going to talk about them right now. When you initially do this, you're probably going to have this looking more white. And then these values may be a little bit different. So these may be like 200 and 1,000 or something like that. Um, so you can see how those settings kind of adjust the way that this looks inside of V-Ray. And so what we have right now is we have an image and basically what it's doing is if I rotate off to the side, you can see how the light shining through the window is being affected by this volumetric fog setting. And so what it's doing is making this look much more environmental um, so, or like there's particles in the air in the environment. And so if we were to go in right now, one thing you need to note about this that I've really noticed is this actually renders a lot brighter in your actual rendering itself um, if you do a, a render with V-Ray instead of an interactive render this will render a lot brighter so just be aware of that when you're adjusting your settings so if I go in and I just do a render with V-Ray you're going to notice this room is going to be a lot brighter than it was when we had just the interactive render going on 
And so I want to go in and I want to make a few different adjustments on this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this inter or this render for right now. I'm just giving you kind of an idea what this does. This already gives you a pretty bright, decent looking space, um, but I want to make some adjustments to the way this is going to look. And I like to do this with the interactive render on just so I can see what changes are being made. And uh, so um, as we go, so like for example, I want the color of this fog to be more of a yellow color. So in order to get to that, you're just going to click on the color and I'm just going to drag this down, maybe like a yellow oranges type color like this one. You can see how when I do that, it's actually adjusting the color of the particles and the light coming through here. So it's changing kind of the feel of this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust this to kind of an orangish color. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the distance. So when I adjust the distance, what's going to happen is a larger value on the distance is going to make the fog more transparent. So you can see how if I drag this to the right, there's more light getting through and these shadows get more pronounced. Or if I drag it off to the left, you can see how the fog is actually like scattering more of the light. So adjusting the distance is going to adjust how transparent your fog is. So for this one, I'm probably going to leave this at about 660. And then the other thing we're going to adjust is our fog height. And what the fog height is going to do is when V-Ray brings the fog in here, it actually uh, it sets the fog based on a certain height along the Z axis um, or the blue axis. And so what this means is the higher this is going to be, the higher the fog is, um, the more fog you're going to get in your scene. So if I drag this all the way up, then the sun's getting blocked by more fog. Or if I drop this down to the left, um, there's less fog higher up, meaning that we're getting more light into our scene. And so you can see how as I drag this to the left, um, the fog is getting more pronounced. But if you drag it too far to the left, the fog isn't coming high enough off of the uh, off of the um, Z axis in order to affect our scene. So you kind of have to find something in here. You can see how this is adjusting up and down a little bit the more that I do this. So it's just kind of a feel thing more than anything else. So I'm probably going to put this in at like 100 or something like that. I feel like that gives me a pretty good view of the fog coming through. So, and there's other things we can adjust. I'm not really going to talk about it too much in this video. The only other thing I really want to talk about is right now I want to talk about the affected by, and this is really going to affect like multiple different lights. Um, so if you have more than one light in your scene, for example, you can set if this is affected by all of your different lights, or you can click on this button for selected lights. And let's say I had my rectangle light in here, but I didn't want fog to be affected by that. Um, I could just click on something like the sunlight only, and this would only affect the sunlight. Or if you hold the control key, you can select multiple different lights inside your scene. But for now, I'm just going to kind of leave this as is. Um, if you guys want more detail on this or you want to talk about some of the other settings, we can definitely do that. But for right now, let's go ahead and render out our scene. So I'm just going to click stop on my interactive render. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to click on my option for render with V-Ray. And so one thing I don't really like about this right now is it's still kind of a dark scene. And so what I want to do is I want to stop my interactive render and I want to go in and I just want to adjust the brightness of my sunlight. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to adjust my sunlight to two instead of one. And I'll make that change with an interactive render just so you can see what the difference is. But you can see if I take this from a one to a two, I'm getting a lot more sunlight in here, so I'm getting a brighter image. If you were to take this up to 10, this would be a lot brighter, and this is probably not what you want because it's going to be washed out, but you can see how you can adjust the power of this by adjusting the brightness of your sunlight. And so I'm just going to go back in one more time. I'm probably going to rotate this down just a little bit. I don't like that window showing through, so I'm going to adjust my scene a little bit, but then I'm just going to click the button for render with V-Ray, and I'm going to do kind of a final render. And so one thing you're going to notice when you do this is when this starts off, when it first starts building your lights and everything else, this rendering doesn't really look very good. Um, so, But as it goes, it kind of uh, denoises everything and it does a pretty good job of um, 
of really rendering through the lighting in here and making this look realistic. So you can see how it has to take a lot of passes in here. One thing you may want to consider if you get a lot of noise in here is um, either adding another light kind of in the background um, just to throw a little bit more light on here um, so you don't necessarily get this noise or some other things like that. Um, I'm kind of liking the result that I'm getting right here, but you can see how this just takes a little bit of time to go through and do all the different passes and things like that. So you can see how my rendering is finished and I've got these nice rays coming in through the window casting the light inside my scene. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. This ought to at least give you some building blocks to start messing around with the different volumetric fog settings in V-Ray. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is there something that can make these look better? Have you been using this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.